So, boys, if you were going to put intro music in, where would you put it? Um, How about right here? <laughs> I ruined it. <laughs> you ruined it. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Beard of Geeks, the weekly grab bag of topics covering movies, comics, video games, and TV. My name is Jags. I will be your beard master for this evening. And with me is the very sexy Bobby Baxter and the oh so sensual Patrick Brown. Hello, boys. <laughs> g'day, g'day. Hi. Hello. What's happening? <laughs> A lot. Oh, A yeah. lot. <laughs> <laughs> Go into detail. <laughs> oh, you know, the usual. Boring work. Deadlines. I, I, I shouldn't lines, say boring. Deadlines. <laughs> deadlines. He's got, he's yeah, got everyone's you know. like, dream job. And he's like, oh, <laughs> just just boring work, you know. <laughs> drawing drawing superheroes all day. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, uh. No, nah, it's been crazy fun. But yeah, yeah. It's just I had to draw Spider Man today. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, <laughs> again. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I do, I do need a break. Yeah. That's, the only thing that sucks about being freelance is you don't really sort of get to book in those holidays. No, not at all. I, yeah, none. Because what happens for you if you need to book in holidays? Like you want to have a uh, week off? Well, I have to cover myself. So I've got to kind of, you know, a week before or a few weeks before, make sure I kind of double my workload and then I can have like a week off. So you have to do two weeks work in yep. one week if you want to have a week off. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, but uh, that's what I did when I went to New York. We, yeah, I, had to, I think I did it in like three weeks prior, and I just mashed out the work, and uh, yeah. You're a goddamn animal. <laughs> <laughs> Why, thank you. <laughs> it's a bald eagle over here. Yeah. <laughs> bald eagle. I'll take that. I like that. Bald eagle brown. <laughs> <laughs> that can be my new nickname, yeah. Oh, well. Plenty of nicknames. So. It's better than... Uh, <laughs> there are some we can't repeat than, on the show. Better, better than um, Heisen Brown. <laughs> I like Heisen Brown. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind that. But I'll take Bald Eagle. Yeah. <laughs> so what have you been up to? Bob, what's been going on with you? Uh, the weekly grind as well for me. But uh, what else have we been doing outside of work that's not totally boring to talk about? Um, been watching 12 Monkeys on um, Netflix. Been binge watching that and i'm supposed to be at home watching the season finale tonight but i'm doing a podcast instead so <laughs> thanks <Whoops>. jakes <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> it's got to be done yeah, we're actually that's... recording um uh we're recording a couple of days earlier this week because um we'll be in hobart at area 52 is free comic book day so we can't record on that day so we're recording a few days earlier just to um, get it out of the way. So we're not really doing any news or anything today. We're just going to just have a bit of fun. And all the guys have brought in uh, sort of a topic each. We're just going to talk a bit and shoot the breeze and have a bloody good time. <laughs> and drink some beers while yeah. we're at it. Well, you're already on your second one, you <laughs> well, I'm alcoholic. Gonna, I'm going to drink your beer, you mean. Yeah. <laughs> Pat forgot to bring beer. Isn't that convenient? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so if he goes quiet, it's because I've sent him out <laughs> to get more. <laughs> just go to the bottle shop. <laughs> I'm just off to the bottle hire. <laughs> <laughs> it's open for another hour. <laughs> <laughs> Pause. <laughs> <laughs> Clump. <laughs> so it's like the Simpsons. How you find it, Twelve Monkeys? I've enjoyed it. I yep. think it's really good. Um, it's definitely a lot different than the film. Uh, I haven't read the book or anything, um, mm. but I always loved the film. The film's a yep. bit of a classic for me. Um, but Time the show, movies. the show's pretty cool. It it like shows you a lot more of the future and a lot of the characters in the future than what the the movie does. The movie's kind of got you know the snippets where he goes back and stuff, but largely it's based in the the current time, or whatever. But um, yeah, this one's pretty cool. It jumps all over the t all over the place too, time wise. Like they in the first season, it's pretty much based around sort of two thousand and fourteen to two thousand and seventeen ish, I think. But uh, the second season, they go all the way back to like World War Two sort of stuff. Oh, sweet! So yeah, oh. um, and cool characters too. So. That's like three seasons in now. Uh, two, I think. Yeah, the third two. one's out this year. Yeah, I think. I think the the newest seasons just dropped on Netflix, so that's why we've we've picked it up. But um, I've I think it was a sci-fi. Um, mm. like the sci-fi channel, I think it's from Yeah, that. that's right. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'd never heard of it before at all. Oh, really? No. no. Have you watched the movie that the Bruce no. Willis, Bruce Willis and Brad Pitt? 
Yeah. No, all right. No, no. Oh, mate, get on, get on it. No, oh, yeah. It's one one of my favorite Brad Pitt movies. I think like he oh, plays yeah. a great madman in mm. that in that movie. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I just it. bought um today. I bought eleven twenty two sixty three on Blu Ray. Um, oh, yeah. I have like a voucher. That's a good so like, series. I never finished it. I only got about four episodes in, so I'm pretty keen to sit down and binge watch that mm. sort of over the next week. Big Stephen King fan, so mm. and uh, I might be talking about The Dark Tower today, so I'm pretty excited for that, but we'll get to that shortly. But um, yeah, so pretty keen to get into this, that. What's this? I, I haven't actually heard of what you're... Uh, uh, 112263, uh, it's a story uh, about a guy, James Franco, is in it, and yep. he knows this guy that runs this diner, sort of like this American diner, sort of. Anyway, he goes there, and this guy tells him that for some reason in the back of this diner in, like, the storage closet is, like, a portal, like a portal back to 19... I think it's 1960. Uh, it's, like, a specific date in 1960. Like, it only ever goes back to that date. Mm. And he's been going back in time to try and stop the Kennedy assassination. But he's tried it, like, but because the assassination doesn't happen for, like, three years, so he's got to go back in time and live in the early 60s for, like, three years. And he's trying to stop the Kennedy assassination. He's been doing it for years. Mm. But um, he gets sick of, for whatever reason, or um, I can't really recall. But then he sort of passes it on to Franco, and he sort of jumps in and goes back, and he's, like, sort of tasked to try and stop the Kennedy assassination, but every time he tries to change something, like the timeline sort of pushes back. Mm. So, like, you know, like some random or whatever will get killed or whatever. But, yeah, sort of in the book, like it doesn't – the future doesn't always end up, like, positive. Like, uh, yeah, so Mm, nuclear winter and all this shit. But, yeah, like I haven't actually watched the entire series, so I don't know sort of where it leads because I am very familiar with the book and some of you know what happens I've never actually read it but yeah looking forward to sitting down and watching the whole 10 episode series because yeah, yeah like cool. I said I only got like four episodes in yep yeah mm. so it's almost like times against them sort of thing. like mm. like every time they fix they think they've fixed something yeah and then they come back you know it's worse off you know, something like that. You know, yeah. that's the whole yeah. thing someone always says, like, what if we just went back in time and killed Hitler? We, you know, like, you know, I that don't know. The moon blows of- up or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know? 12 Monkeys has got a lot of that going on too in the in the season. Like, they, uh, there are the... Like, it, it almost only happens once in... Well, in the first season, it only sort of happens once that they actually are able to fix anything. Mm. But 99% of the time, it's always like they go and fix something and then it's broken somewhere else and they fix something and it's broken somewhere yeah. else. Which is cool because it always keeps it interesting. But And I didn't find it too... Dra- like, some, you know, you watch some shows and it, it gets a bit cyclical and you're like, okay, come on, let's get somewhere. But they... They keep it pretty fresh and interesting. I found like a yeah, and especially because we've been binge watching it so much that yeah, uh, like yeah, we're we're still sticking with it. So you feel a bit nice. worn out. Um, I could use a break now. Like yeah. now we're at the end of two seat. Like we watched two almost back to back. So, um, yeah, it'd be it'd be you know give it another year and and I'd be keen to jump on again. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun show. Yeah, it's cool. Pat, do you have any time to watch anything lately or do you sort of just work for like 14 hours and then go to bed? <laughs> <laughs> uh, lately, it's just been a lot of, yeah, working. Um, not too much time for shows. I mean, before bed every night, I usually chuck on... I, I've been playing a lot of Zelda, uh, Breath of the Wild, and, the, yep. and that's just been really good. Just to unwind, like that little bit of time before bed is... is uh, Pretty cool, and it keeps me sane as well. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got a Switch, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I got a, yeah, I got the Nintendo Switch. And that's... how are you finding the Switch? Do you are you sort of the TV player, or are you sort of the handheld, or you uh, do a bit of I'm both? strictly TV usually. Yep. Yeah, I'm. I mean, because I've never really like I'm not a hardcore Nintendo player. Uh, never really have been, but I mean, I do love all the old games, but um, I'm mostly PlayStation. But this is really got me and i'm mainly in it for zelda and mario i mean i love my open world games and you know mario odyssey is coming out at the end of the year so i've been hanging out for that but Plus, you got you got mario kart as well the got other day? mario kart the other yeah. day yeah that's been a lot of fun that's a bit of fun 
Yeah. Bit of sort of stress relief, you know. Yeah, a bit of, bit of fun. Yeah. <laughs> and it's mainly good for, you know, the wife and, and my son Mason loves it. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's been good. But yeah. no, Breath of the Wild, I've been loving that. I'm actually pretty hooked on it at the moment. Yep. It's like on par with, you know, The Witcher and all that for me. it's Really? Even though it's just like, you know, got that uh, kiddie style to it, it's it's very, uh, yeah, it's addictive. I wasn't sure if you were going to jump on that because I, I, <laughs> I've been playing that as well. Um, yeah. And got into it a few weeks before you, like, you, I think you got the game before me, but uh, you, you were sort of flat out with work and stuff mm. and didn't play it much and then you sort of went oh you know yeah it's it's pretty cool and i said no dude it's like <laughs> give it a chance yeah, yeah give it give it a run i'm like um yeah it's it's funny isn't it it's like the most relaxing game yeah i've played in a long time like a most relaxing open world game i've played in a and long it can time. be challenging as well but it's um you know to a level where it's not annoying and and it's just yeah really enjoyable game all, yeah. all around but a lot of fun to explore as well i've been finding i just I just love exploring and and, just, and there's so much to find. Like, it's a massive open world. The land is huge and, uh, yeah. And it doesn't... Uh, what I, I was telling Brent about this a few weeks ago as well, what I love about that game is um, they don't... It's not like an Ubisoft game where they put a million things on the map and you just have mm. to tick all these little boxes off and, and like, okay, if go and find piece of yeah. 57 of 100 blower and... it's like they, they've got like a lot of repetitive stuff in that yeah. game but they don't like bog down the menu with it so mm. it, you're kind of just naturally finding it as you go i love how that yeah they've laid they've laid it all out perfectly because i love how simple even the story is like it's just and the way it's it's almost like there's only like two massive big main parts of the main quest uh, you know like you you ha- you can either tackle the big boss from the start and you probably got a good chance of dying or you can go ahead and take down all four of those divine beasts to kind of mm. break away his health uh so you've got a better chance and going off and doing all those four different things and just finding them on the map yourself is really uh you know it's kind of rewarding in that way and it's really mm. a lot more interesting and yeah they just keep it simple you know like it's not too repetitive yeah, simple quest from the start, and there's a mm. few little side quests here and there. But like, what I, what I like about it too is like every NPC that you come across in the game, you kind of feel like you have to talk to them, like yeah. <laughs> because there's so much big open area yeah. and like world, you know, and you big just people. planes <laughs> and stuff, and and you know the odd monsters sprinkled in. But it's a very solitary sort of game, yeah. And um, the the odd couple of times where you come across someone you're like. Oh shit! I better talk to you. Like, what, yeah. Are, yeah, what are you gonna do? And and sometimes they they don't give you anything. They're just mm. like a weird little interaction. But I seem to remember the characters more, like NPCs in that game, more mm. than anything else because they're so weird and varied and and few yeah. and far between. And mm. have you have you met the guy in the village in one of the villages um, that builds a house for you? No. <laughs> he's a real flamboyant he, he owns this like construction company and they're building a house and he's like this super flamboyant campy guy <laughs> in like pink clothes and stuff and like every time you come up to him he's like hello <laughs> <laughs> he's just like the opposite of a construction worker so oh, funny. <laughs> typical construction worker so uh, oh, yeah that good. game's full of just weird little characters yeah like that. i love it yeah <laughs> i've been um I've been going back and playing Uncharted 4. Uh, so yeah. I've been playing through the campaign again. I only played it the once. But yeah, really enjoying it the second time around. But I feel like the difficulty level on this is bumped up just that little bit more. I mean, just sort of in combat. Mm-hmm. Or unless I've just got, you know, sort of lost the knack for it since the last Uncharted game. Because I'm just like, aiming is a lot more sort of, you know, you've got to be very precise and yeah and sort of getting killed pretty easily in that mm. i was here playing it a couple of weeks ago and my dad rocked up and he comes in the door and i'm sitting there and i'm playing and he's sort of standing there with his hand in his pocket and he's watching me and i'm doing this big prison break scene and shooting at all these guards and stuff and i'm sort of just like bang 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 and i'm not sort of hitting much and he's just like not a very good shot are you <laughs> <laughs> I was like, do you want to have a go? <laughs> and then uh, my girlfriend stayed that night and I was um, playing the next morning and she comes in and she's sitting down next to me and I'm doing this action scene and bang, bang, bang. And she's like, 
You're not a very good shot, are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're the second person to say that to me in 24 hours. <laughs> Maybe that uh, Battlefield patch that came out the other week that we talked about got yeah. nothing to do with the patch. Yeah, mate. <laughs> yeah. It's played it's, with the controller. Yeah. It's just me. It's just me. I've got to dodge it. Yeah, the yeah. stick. The stick's broken on my Need controller. Need a stick alignment. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I've been playing that. I've been really enjoying it. That's I haven't good. actually played that one yet. We just borrowed it off you the other week, actually, mm. buddy. But um, Hales has been playing it through the week. Yeah, I've uh, seen her online. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, you know, it's hard to not try and listen to it in the background while I'm working, but um, <laughs> but she's been really good. Like every time I come in the room, she'll quickly pause it. So, so it, oh, like, don't spoil it. For no me. spoilers yeah. at all. I'm like, oh, you know, I I, I don't mind just watching for a bit. She's like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Get back to work. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> she's a keeper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm I'm like just seeing the odd tiny little snippet here and there of that game. I'm dying to get into that oh, yeah. it looks amazing yeah mm. but the puzzles are very simplified for this game like even first time around i'm like these puzzles are really easy to solve and there's not sort of a lot of variety in them mm. but mm. it's it's okay like it's it's a really good game and it's a lot longer than i thought it's like 24 chapters but geez how long wow. did i play it I, I probably played it i can't recall specifically but it's probably it was probably like 15 to 18 hours or something like that on the first mm. playthrough. You know, just yeah. wandering around and having a bit of a search everywhere. and Yeah. Yeah, but I really liked it and enjoying playing it again. Mm. Mm. Nathan Drake. I want to have another go around. Can't, well. mate. You've got to get those deadlines. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have no life. <laughs> I'll just keep it at my house for a while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just let me know when you need it. <laughs> Three more years. Uh, get back onto it. I want to go back to last week's episode. Uh, where we spoke about Sam, who did fan mm. art and that for us, and we mentioned that uh, we teed up some stuff for him. And I got that sent down to him during the week, and his sister sent me a great picture of him um, in the back of the ute with uh, all his stuff and that. We s- so we sent him down like um nice framed picture of Pats of the Flash. Uh, we found out that uh, he had his eye on, and just some a uh, Brown Fury comic. And Bob, tell him what you... What you did on the inside cover? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I drew the little, um, the little toilet roll character that he drew with the uh, sandpaper drill hand. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I did my little rendition of that. So yeah. it's very yeah. cool. Yeah. It's very cool. I love yeah. seeing that. That was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I was told uh, he was very happy. Couldn't get the smile off his face. So yeah, yeah. so Sam, thanks again, mate, and we hope you enjoy it. Yeah, thanks, Just, mate. Yeah, same as last time. Keep drawing, mate. Keep mm. doing what you're yeah. doing. You'll probably end up replacing one of these guys one day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I think I started around about 10, so, you know. <laughs> Start now, keep going at it. <laughs> so thanks, Sam. You'd be the envy of all your friends with all that cool stuff. And also, on a personal note, I just want to uh, apologize for last week. And I want to say thank you to everyone who um, sits through and listens to me struggle with the English language. Um, I'm not sure if I have some mild form of speech impediment or dyslexia or something like that. Like that. It's like just then. <laughs> But I listened back to the podcast when I was editing it and we were talking about Guardians and I kept saying uh, integral to the story when I meant to say integral and I tried to say... uh, Hale says, isn't it supposed to be integral? (laughs) (laughs) That's how I say it too. (laughs) So thanks to everyone who um, sits through and listens to me struggle. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you all for staying and listening. (laughs) I want to talk about the Dark Tower. Now, I don't know if you know, but I'm a massive Dark Tower fan. Started reading the books about 10 years ago. The first, well, the seven books. I read them all and I read the eighth book and I've listened to the audio books and I've read the short story and I've got all the Marvel comic series and now the movie comes out in a couple of months and the first trailer was released yesterday. Did you watch it, Pat? Did you watch the Dark Tower trailer? Yeah. What do yeah. you think, as someone who knows nothing about the yeah, books? Yeah, I know nothing. Um, uh, John, <laughs> I, I know, I know John nothing. Snow. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, as a you know, not knowing anything about it, I I thought it was really cool, and and um, I I loved the trailer. It was it just yeah grabbed me. So that that whole mm. you know, I'm really interested to see what it's going to be. What about you, big man? Yeah, I mean, you chucked it on for me just like. 15 minutes ago when we got here because I don't I like, watch anything. Watch this. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I got to say, I, I think I'm in too. Like, I, I've never read any of the stuff, uh, any 
any of it, the 73 books that you've read. Um, but yeah, looks like a, a cool little, uh, mm. cool little ride to go on. So mm. yeah. And I always like Idris Elba. <laughs> <laughs> so, His American accent yeah. is pretty good in that trailer. Yeah. I, that threw me because I was, I was waiting to do some, uh, really shitty Id- Idris Elba impersonations <laughs> when he came on and, uh, and, uh, he threw me with his weird accent, <laughs> American Did you ever accent. Picture but it, it was Matthew good. McConaughey as the guy, or well, I read uh, oh, I don't know about a year and a half, two years ago, there was this rumor that they were talking about adapting The Stand, which is another Stephen King book, and Matthew McConaughey was rumored to be playing Randall Flagg because in the book series, Stephen King sort of created this sort of Stephen King like connected universe before connected universes were all the rage. And so Walter, because he has many names, you know, in The Man in Black, Walter O'Dim, Randall Flagg, he appears in multiple books. So in The Dark Tower, he's sort of known as The Man in Black, you know, Walter O'Dim. But in The Stand, he's the same character, like he's, but he's Rand, he goes by Randall Flagg. So he's sort of the same antagonist in those books. And he's also mentioned in Insomnia, which is another King book that was adapted. But in that film, they sort of left all that aspect out but a lot of sort of the things that are talked about in these books like um car uh which is the the sort of books version of fate so like you know car they talk about how car is a wheel and everything always comes back around you know like in a circle and that they speak about that in that book as well but yeah they cut all that out and get another beer pet. <laughs> to slap his wrist. <laughs> Hands off my beer. <laughs> While we're at it, I'll just take a quick beer break. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, there, there he is. Go. Sorry, mate. Continue. No, you're all right. What was I saying? <laughs> oh, the books. You lost me. <laughs> Ooh, look at him. Down on those beers. <sighs> no, I really like... Um, yeah, the, uh, the trailer looks really good. And yeah, when he was... Um, mentioned sort of for that role i was like yeah that's that's perfect that's ideal but then you know they've he's signed on for this like this dark tale film and uh yeah really love the casting like he's i never sort of pictured matthew mcconaughey in that role but when it was sort of rumored for the stand i'm like you know what that's like perfect casting so i really enjoy it can't wait to see it whether it's going to be good or bad i think it's just going to make me love the books even more and the you know all the comics and everything and Mm. So I'm really, really excited to see it. I got to be honest. I got to be. I got to be teary watching it because it's <laughs> <laughs> just this big book nerd. People don't understand. Like, do, you, do you think you? it's going to convey well in a movie? Like you know, the people like us who haven't seen anything of it. You think it's going to work well in that format? Well, what I saw from the trailer, the trailer to me, like obviously that's not indicative of the final product. Yeah. The trailer just seems like the sort of all right, here's the bare bones version of the story. This is what you need to know because the books are so dense. They're so layered. Like, he brings in other characters from other books. You know, we get a character die from this book and then they wake up sort of in this Duck Tower series, you know, they're like, I died. You know, I was killed by a vampire or whatever and now I'm here. I'm in this strange sort of Western frontier world. And then sort of Stephen King wrote himself into the sixth book, oh, okay. Song of Susanna. Like he, yeah, he wrote it like sort of the fictionalized version of himself into that book, and the, all the characters encounter him and interact with him and that. Yeah, but yeah, it um, looks really good. I'm so excited. From the trailer, like how uh, how many books are you seeing in this trailer? Like, are they just doing the one book, or are they doing like? a bunch of books and putting it all into one movie sort of thing. they're just sort of cherry picking bits and sort of splicing it's really hard to sort of tell the average film goer about this movie because this movie is based on these books but at the same time it isn't okay. and anyone who hasn't read it won't get it but anyone you know all fans of the book they're like which has got me really excited because it doesn't have to be sort of because what happens in the book, like, it doesn't have to be, like, a totally faithful adaptation to sort of line up with what happens in the book, books. So, it's, yeah, pretty exciting. But, yeah, in the trailer, the sort of scene sort of cherry-picked, like, when Jake walks into the house and he finds, like, the portal and stuff, that's from book two. Right, okay. So, because Jake's in the first book. Jake's actually killed, like, the man in black 
kills him. Like he's on his way to school and he's standing at the, the corner, sort of like in New York City, waiting for the traffic. And there's like a car coming and sort of the man in black pushes him out and he gets run over by this car mm. and he dies and he wakes up in Midworld and that's where he meets Roland. But yeah, that scene sort of from the trailer, sort of like he ends up back on Earth and then he goes back. So I think they're sort of just like, yep, we'll take this bit and we'll put that there and we'll sort of take a character from this book and move it down. But yeah, it's um, it's really cool. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to it. Sweet. Sounds good. Mm. But yeah, it looks those, good too. Yeah, it does look good. Mm. And if they sort of got his creed, the, the sort of gunslinger's creed at the end of the trailer, you know. He who aims with his hand has forgotten the face of his father, you know, and all that shit. Mm. So, I love it. Yeah, nice. So, I get misty eyed just <laughs> thinking about it. And I got the poster. I got I got the poster hanging up in here in the beard cave now. Dedication. Like, like, straight up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that new poster came out yesterday morning, and I went, like, straight down to Officeworks and got it printed out. and bought a frame, and now I got it hanging up on the wall, and it looks pretty sweet. Also, nice. got a new Fight Club poster on the wall. Don't know if you noticed that. It's a bit what? hard to miss. <laughs> 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 but yeah it's pretty good i've had that poster for about 10 odd years 10 12 years wow. yeah yeah i finally just, just laying around like frame that it. just <laughs> sitting in tubes you know waiting for the next time they move house to remind me that they're there <laughs> yeah. and then maybe that house i've got room to hang it <laughs> you know it's i could just buy a few frames and hang them up but yeah anyway i've still got that muhammad ali poster from like 2003 oh, that, wow. we had, that we had in the pad <laughs> way back what about uh there was a few we had hanging up like um bulletproof monk i think was another one <laughs> oh, did we really yeah. do you remember i used to get all the like spider-man prints and like print them out on crappy a4 laser <laughs> printer from like tape <laughs> and and just sh- like cover our walls with just Spider Man stuff. <laughs> or we'd go down to the the mall in Launceston and they got that that post oh. there where they put all the band yeah. posters on. And we used to walk, uh, you know, yeah, Saturday night on the way home from the clubs, and walk past there and be like, "Any band posters you want? Like, rip off the pole, <laughs> take it home, and stick it on the on the wall, <laughs> on the wall of weird." Yeah, it was this haggard, bloody, dirty oh, old wall dinky. of just crap <laughs> yeah. but we loved it oh it was like had so much character that place didn't yeah <laughs> walk up the hallway and i don't like, know if character's the right pot- word <laughs> yeah. up the hallway and there's like potholes everywhere you gotta like you fall in one of the holes going to the toilet <laughs> it was more like it was two steps away from me you know, dilapidated <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah pretty classed much. as dilapidated and on its way and to the, being condemned and the bathroom had like carpet on the floor. No, oh, not that was horrible. <laughs> 70s oh shag God, around the toilet too, remember? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Don't take me back there. <laughs> oh, dark days. <laughs> the good old days. And the really um, low shower head. Yeah. <laughs> Especially so, for Bobby who's oh, six foot eight or something. Yeah, no, I'm not six foot eight. I'm six foot six. But I think <laughs> two meters tall. And <laughs> the shower head sitting at about 160. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. I used to just like spray my chest in the morning. <laughs> yeah. That'll do. Washy belly button. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> belly button will get a good clean. Well, Nothing at least else. I know that's clean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, we've strayed. We've strayed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to Bulletproof Monk, remember that time um, you <laughs> rang me and you're like, I've got, I've rented out Bulletproof Monk. Do you want to come around and watch it? Like, because I didn't have a car at the time or whatever. You're like, I'll come get you. And I'm like, yeah, sure, man. I'll, I'll come around and watch it. And then I got in the car and I just like, we convinced our other might other mate to um buy a, a carton of piss instead <laughs> and we went out in the piss and we tried to ring, i tried to ring bobby like on my nokia 5510 and <laughs> and all i got was like the dial-up tone like <laughs> someone was on the internet and we that went out my, we, that was my answering machine back in like the early 2000s with the, <laughs> the dial-up tone <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, God damn it, he's on the internet again. <laughs> and we had that awesome night. We like, we had that awesome night drinking. And then we got like to um, school the next day. And we're like, oh, Bob, we tried to ring you last night. We had the best night. We went out drinking. It's like, oh, bloody Scotty on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the one time it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't Trying to download like, your three and a half meg song and take you an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got like, you know, three tracks off the new Blink-182 album. <laughs> <laughs> That would have been done in about two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jeez. How did we survive? 
I don't know how kids do it today because if you told them like about dial up and like we didn't have phones, we actually went outside and rode bikes and shit. They'd Mm. be like, what? What's a bike? I'll Google it. (laughs) 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 Throw eggs at houses and things. Yeah. I never threw eggs at houses. You You never did? You were from the wrong side of the (laughs) track. The wrong side? (laughs) (laughs) It was just me then. (laughs) He just lived in the rough part of town. Yeah. (laughs) No, he didn't. He actually, your old place was down the road. Remember I moved into uh, Halstead Street? Oh, uh, yeah. And then yeah. you're like, my old house is like three doors down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was three like the one. Down. Another uh, early 2000s musical oh, reference. <laughs> brings me back. It brings me back. <laughs> I'd like to say I intentionally threw that in, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just ashamed I brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's another one of Pat's favorites, probably. <laughs> Oh, what do they sing? I can't remember. Uh, Kryptonite. <laughs> That's all I know. That's like their hit, isn't it? We said no superheroes on this podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're not talking about superheroes today. We've had enough of superhero movies. <laughs> superheroes. Yeah. And yeah. Pat, you're going to have to get another job because we don't want to talk about comics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What am I going to do? <laughs> what am I going to talk about now? Oh, I've actually got a topic. I might talk about that, eh? What do you reckon? Go for it. Yep. Run with it. Hit me. I'm going to do a film review. Because I watched a film that I've been wanting to watch for a while, and I finally bought it. Uh, it was released this week, and I went out and bought it. It's called The Autopsy of Jane Doe. I have the cover here. I'll pass it around. Here, Pat, have a look. Mm. Yeah, it looks a bit spooky. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm interested. I like the look of it. Yeah. Oh, hey, jeez. There you go. <laughs> Here, okay, I'll my, pass it to you. My audio review of my looking at this yes. Blu-ray case. Uh, y- yes, it, it looks is. spooky. <laughs> it is most definitely a film. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a DVD case. Uh, yeah, no, um, Blu-ray, I should say. Tell me about it. What are, What are your thoughts? Well, like, I'm... <laughs> you're right. Thank you. Thank you. Just put, just put that there. <laughs> Um, it was really good. I really liked it. Um, the sort of the premises, uh, the beginning of the movie, like, I'm not going to do spoilers about this. So I was just going to sort of do my review and, yeah, you take what you want from it. Anyway, so the movie starts, like, uh, on this house and uh, you go in, all the cops and that are there, sheriffs and shit. And uh, they go in and, like, this family and that's been murdered in this house. And, you know, they sort of know point of entry or anything like that they can't work out sort of what's happened to them anyway they go down into the basement and they they find this girl there sort of half buried sort of half uncovered and anyway so they're like Ooh, what's what's going on here what's up with this girl she's buried and all this shit so we're gonna find out what happens because we're police and that's our job <laughs> so they wanna, take this. Do you want to do this one or no. <laughs> let's just pretend? Let's pretend we didn't see this one. Let's just cover it back up. <laughs> yeah, 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 just just flick it. it a bit, a bit of dirt to bit the of, side. Bit of chicken scrape there. <laughs> <laughs> and the cr- scrape. <laughs> <laughs> and then the credits roll. <laughs> So anyway, they uh, they take this Jane Doe down to the local coroner's, um, played by Brian Cox and Emil Hirsch, their sort of father and son sort of coroner team, and they're like, "Oh, we've got this Jane Doe, and there's been this big murder, and we, you know, I can explain all that to sort of the press and stuff, but I can't explain her. So I need you guys to find out the cause of death." And he's like, "I need it by the morning." So they got to sort of pull an all nighter to do it, and. It's sort of this little sort of confined film because their sort of um, their coroner's sort of office is under their house, so they have their house and sort of the under the story of the house is like you know big like sort of cubed corridor, and they've got the coroner's room and office and all that elevator and all that. So they get down there, so it's like this very confined sort of claustrophobic um, feeling flick. I like this already. They've got this Jane Doe, and they sort of they can't explain what's happened to her so they've got to do this autopsy and honestly that is the best bit of the movie like the autopsy scene sort of just played out sort of just like this slow burn and they're sort of finding out like all these little details and that things they can't explain and 
what's going on with this, you know, and they open her up and they find all this weird stuff, like the lungs are burnt and, uh, but she's got no burn signs on the outside or whatever. So, you know, how could that have happened? And just yeah, they- all the ciggies. <laughs> 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 Way too many darts, love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't smoke, guys. Don't smoke. It's not good. So, yeah, they're doing this uh, autopsy and sort of just as they go along, sort of weird stuff starts to happen and it gradually gets a bit spookier and yeah sort of getting to the final third of the film yeah Ross sort of really really ramps up but um yeah I really um I really liked it uh absolutely I think uh the autopsy scenes were really the most interesting part of the movie like it looked really good um it was lit really well and was shot really well and I really enjoyed uh the cinematography the practical effects were really good, like the autopsy stuff, like they're mm. cutting and they're taking out the ribs and, you know, sort of removing brains and all this sort of stuff. Because they do an autopsy sort of um, earlier in the film as well. They're doing another autopsy on <coughs> someone and stuff. And Is this American, this movie? Or? Yeah, it's an American film. Yeah. It's sort of just like a indie sort of lower budget yeah. flick in that. It's um, directed by, what's his name? Andre, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Uh, Norwegian director, uh, Andre Overdahl. He directed um, Troll Hunter. Have you ever seen Troll uh, Hunter? No, but I, no. I have heard of it, yeah. Yeah, it's sort of like this mockumentary about these kids that are sort of following this guy. He's really mysterious. And then he's like, you know, do you want to know what I do? I hunt trolls. Like, I'm in charge of that and, like, this... Yeah, it's this mockumentary about them following him, him around and, like, hunting trolls and stuff. And it's really good. It's a really good movie. But, yeah, like, I really, really like this movie. I've got some notes here I've written down. Yeah, so this really is, like, this real sense of building dread. Like, you don't know who this girl is, where she come from, why was she buried, and, yeah, all this weird stuff sort of starts to happen. I can't really say too much without going... Spoiler in that, because it's definitely something like I'd like you to watch. Mm. But yeah, cinematography, fantastic. Um, Brian Cox and Emil Hirsch did a really good job. The cast in this movie isn't terribly big. There's probably only about six, seven, eight cast members in this movie. But I've got to say, the uh, young actress who plays Jane Doe, Owen Kelly, I think she's an Irish actress. Like, she bloody does a good job for playing a corpse. <laughs> like, she does a great job, and, like, hats off to her, because for, like, 85% of this movie, like, she's, like, nude. Like, you know, you you get it sort of the, you know, the full shots of, you know, all the you know, anatomy and whatever. Mm. But then it's not too gratuitous, like, so they, they might show you one or two bits for the benefit of the story, but then you saw the next scene, like, there's a foot in the way, or there's this in the way, so it's not terribly gratuitous, but, like, they're trying to sort out what's happened, and there's just, like, these sort of... Oh, ooh, bump the mic overhead shots of just like her face and you're sort of just like waiting for her to blink you know but she mm. never does but yeah like absolute hats off to her like for playing a corpse she was like one of the best bits of the movie well, yeah. awesome i think i'll have to lend it <laughs> oh yeah if definitely you if you don't definitely. mind oh yeah, yeah. no no i'll oh, definitely yeah. yeah take it mate take it and watch it yeah, it's cool. definitely worth a watch you, you've sold it to me yep Yep, I'm in. I I like those movies too that are very confined, you know, mm. to to a small space, small cast. Yeah, yeah you just get that tension. Yeah, like, yeah, because it does build. On, yeah, 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 because yeah, it does build. But then, yeah, they're sort of there's like a real bad storm outside, so they're sort of trapped downstairs, yeah. and they sort of they can't get out, and you know they can't get the cops to come help them because they're trapped. But yeah, so what, did like, you, what, what did you say about the house at the start? Was that just a random house that they found her in, or um like? Yeah, it was just like a murder house. Like, the cops have come and they found, like, this family in a house that's sort of been murdered, but they go down to the basement and they find this sort of Jane Doe sort of half buried uh, okay. in the basement. And they sort of, like, they can piece together what's happened to this family, but they can't sort of explain what's happened to her. So then he brings her down to the coroner's and he's like, yeah, I need the cause of death because we need to um, be able to tell the press about this by the morning. And the sheriff is played by... He played bloody... Um, Ramsay Bolton's dad on Game of Thrones, Lord oh, Bolton. Right. Oh, yep. yeah. yeah. I know who you mean, yeah. Yeah, he does a good job for Sheriff and that. His Irish accent slips through a little bit yep. in one or two spots. Mm. But yeah, really good movie. Like, I really recommend it. Really well done. Great little indie horror flick. Really well put together. Looks great. Um, I 
did hear, I did read like um, a couple of reviews and stuff where people found um, there are one or two bits of CG and it just looks a bit iffy, but that sort of sort of throwaway. Like one uh, scene they talked about, yeah. I didn't even notice at all. Yeah, like I didn't even notice it, and I was like, "Was that CG? Was it?" Oh, I sort of, I didn't even realize. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, that's sort of you, you take that with small indie movies. You're not going to get the the real glossy, fancy CG stuff. So mm. yeah. That's cool. But yeah, definitely sort of the mystery surrounding this body is sort of, it was one of those movies where I was sort of sitting there and I sort of had my hand on my chin and I was sort of just leaning forward like, you know, they've got the um, <clears throat> the camera that's set up and they've got the tape recorders and they're sort of recording it as they go, writing all the, you know, things they find on the chalkboard mm. and I'm sort of just leaning forward every time they find something new and I'm just like trying to work it out myself as I'm watching it because I sat and watched it on my own, sort of turned the lights off. Yeah. Turn it up, just yeah. Try to set the mood. Yeah, but um, yeah, I really definitely recommend it. Yeah, nice. It's probably the best horror movie I've seen this year. Wow, oh, yeah, mm. be cool. Mm. Nice. I don't know if I've got anything else to sort of say. What would your rating be if you rated it out of five? I'd give it a four out of five. Oh yeah, yeah, I would. Nice. Um, it's, I think it's just sort of the ending, sort of just it sort of ties up pretty quick. And once you actually find out sort of what's happened to her and that, it's not, you're like, oh yeah, that's really cool. But it's sort of the more autopsy and that leading up to it, sort of the mystery is what I found most interesting. So it's mm. like that, you know, they, mm. that old saying, it's yeah. the journey, not the destination. Yep. yep. But yeah, like I did like the ending and that, but yeah, it's just sort of. Yeah, cool. It's, I find it really fucking hard to end horror movies. Like nine times out of 10, I'll just walk away and sort of be like, oh, okay. Whatever, but it's always that, you know, the best bit of the horror movies is always the first and second act. Mm. It's mm. all fun. And then the third, they just kind of, it happens all the time for me. They, it just shoehorns into this little thing and you sort of go, oh, you either go walk away and go, oh, that was cool. Or you walk away and go, oh, that was <laughs> stupid. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like that thing, you know, you get all sort of modern horror movies and they've, you know, oh, we've defeated the big bad, but then at the end you get like that final jump scare and you're like, oh, they're not gone after all. And it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate oh, those ones. They're we've announced worst. a sequel Because it's like, what years. was the point of the movie if they're yeah. back? You know? But no, this is something I, like, I definitely recommend. And this was released by um, Umbrella Entertainment. In mm-hmm. um, Australia, they're a small like uh, distribution place based out of uh, Victoria. Q in Victoria. You lived in Melbourne, Bob. You might know Q. Yeah, K-E-W. I think it's like southeast suburbs somewhere from uh, in Melbourne. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Well, they're a pretty cool uh, uh, little distributor in that they release a lot of like uh, cult horror and like exploitation flicks. So, like, I've got a big stack of movies and that out there, like, and they release, like, really cool, like, limited editions, and they do um, some great uh, restorations and stuff for sort of movies that, you know, sort of other you know, sort of distributors and that, like, not really interested in or won't touch. Mm-hmm. Like, last year, they related the uh, released the 1990 um, Tom Savini, Night of the Living Dead remake, cool. and they released a limited edition, which I got a copy of. And um, it had the uh, the original night and the remake in the, the same packet and stuff, awesome. and also like um, Reanimator, like uh, Reanimator is like one of my favourite horror movies and stuff. Mm. I brought that around to your house, Bob. Yeah, and, we had, uh, a, had a good little sesh on that the other night. Oh, yeah. it, was, it was a few weeks back now, but yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I'd, I'd never seen it, it before. Oh. <laughs> Just, news just in. I hadn't seen that movie before. <laughs> <laughs> and we had like a Friday night horror movie, like double feature. And I just brought around some random horror flicks that I sort of like was excited to introduce to friends. So I took around uh, Reanimator and The Blob, which is also released by Umbrella Entertainment. And they oh, did wow. like a real sick limited edition on that. Umbrella's really cool because last year they released like a po- they put up a post on Facebook and they're like, oh, are there any movies like you'd be interested in us like trying to get? Mm. And I got on there straight away. I'm like, oh, I want I want the Hitcher, you know, like I want the Hitcher with Rucker Harrow and C. Thomas Howell, and I want the Blob, like the Blob on Blu-ray. And then like four or five months later, they announced like, oh, we're gonna we got the Blob, we're gonna release it in like two or three months. And I was like, 
Shit. They, they listen to me. Maybe. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome though. That, that's really cool. That yeah. they're, they're putting that out to to people and and asking, you know, what what can we get for you? That's that's awesome. Mm. And they re-released um, Rogue Games, which is this uh, exploitation flick with um, Stacey Keach mm. and Jamie Lee Curtis, and they just did like this big. 4k restoration of it which is like yeah it's been really lauded and like people really love it and they re-released like night of the creeps which is this great like 80s uh horror comedy what else do they got oh i've got heaps of their flicks like cue the wing serpent patrick remake which is really good razorback which was australia's uh answer to jaws there's yeah. just like this massive boar like Isn't there the some other new thing coming along like that? Like uh, a new boar movie? Yeah, it looks shit like though. It, didn't they yeah. do a, They did a giant Tassie devil, didn't they? That was like some big road movie though. Oh, that was like a sci-fi movie a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're yeah, talking yeah. about. A Tassie devil Tassie movie. Tassie devil. I was like, <laughs> that's nuts. <laughs> yeah, it was like this monster Tassie devil that's like the size of like like a grizzly bear, like three times the size of a grizzly bear or yeah, something like that. Yeah, it was huge. Me. <laughs> <laughs> that's one you haven't watched bob you'll yeah. track that down and watch it but no nah, like umbrella like I, I love these guys and they had like a giveaway uh six eight months ago where they were giving away like a um, limited edition copy of reanimator and i'm like i've got to go in this competition and i went <laughs> in it and then it was like three days later there was like four or five days left and three or so days later and i was like fuck it i'm going in it again, <laughs> and, I went in it again. and then i was i was at your house pat and I got like a phone call. And yeah. I'm like, who, who the bloody hell is this? I don't <laughs> answer numbers I don't know. Thank fuck I did. Because it was a young bloke at Umbrella. He's like, yeah, you've won. It's like, you just confirm your address and we'll send it to you. And now I've got like, yeah, this limited edition of um, Reanimator, which I'm That's bloody cool. stoked about. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. But that, yeah, that was a fun movie to watch too the other the other week, Reanimator. Like, Hale's, Hale's, like when I said we were going to come around and put on some, you know, old school beaver grade horror movies and she was sort of like, uh, if you must. <laughs> and, and, uh, well, she wasn't like that, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, she got to the end of the night and she went, those are actually like a lot better than I thought. They were. Yeah, she did say that when the blob ended. She's like, you know, Brent, those are actually better than I thought they were going to be. And she I was, was like, like, oh, she had no faith in my film choices. <laughs> <laughs> I guess like when you say B-grade horror movies, you know, she, it could you be, generally could be any You usually put them at the bottom of your list. Yeah. yeah. One to watch. But, and she's yeah. not a... She's not a horror movie person either like she yeah she has mm. a real hard time sort of buying into that stuff oh, so yeah. but i think yeah that kind of like schlocky old school mm. um you know the 80s sort of style of stuff it sits better with her because it doesn't take itself too seriously i think i'd like mm. to give yeah. it a go have, have you heard of the void i think that's only just yeah i watched the void year. about oh, watched two it? weeks ago any good yeah because that's very similar, apparently, to Reanimator and stuff like that, isn't it? The Thing. Um, a lot of people the have thing, said, yeah. like, it's the best practical effects since The Thing. A lot of people really like that movie, but when I watched it, it sort of didn't tell you too much about this whole mystery of this void and everything. Like, you're sort of trapped in this hospital and all these people are just inexplicably, like, turning into monsters. So, it's not really explained why. They're turning into monsters, and like that's kind of something I'd really would have liked to have known, uh, or yeah. just some tiny little hint yep. of how they're like becoming, well, for lack of a better word, infected or whatever. But uh, I like the ending. Um, yeah, on the whole, I did like it. Mm. I will buy it when it comes out. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to definitely want to watch that again. Yep. But yeah, yeah. the guys who released that that wasn't uh, one of their first films and that, but it's definitely going to be the one that they're most known for. Oh, Even right. if like the best thing that comes from this film, they get a lot of attention, and you know someone gives them the opportunity, you know, throw a bit of money at them, and they can sort of go off and and try something yeah. else, you know. But yeah, the practical effects were pretty good. Um, you sort of notice um the limitations in that because there was a lot of um cutting in the movie. Like, sort of keeping things dark, but only showed us on, like, it for a second. Mm. But, like, you know, even if it's, like, darkly lit or whatever, and they, like, just sort of linger on it for two or three seconds, it just felt like it was just cut a bit too much. Like, you could have left it for another second or two, you know, some of these shots and that. But, yeah, on the whole, practical flex were, like, really pretty good. Like, I was pretty impressed in that. And I did like the whole idea of this sort of 
body horror, cosmic, ancient evil, sort of very HP Lovecraft, sort of like, yeah, this ancient void where all these bloody monsters and that come from. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, Patty, I took the last beer. <laughs> <laughs> but I bought them. <laughs> <laughs> Your shout next week. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring, I'll bring the six the next time. <laughs> but yeah, I like the void. I would recommend, yeah, giving that a watch. Yep. Yeah, yeah. cool. I was curious about that one. Mm. Mm. Lots of tentacles and goo and blood and, yeah, it's pretty yeah, nice. pretty gross in some places. Yeah. But, yeah, I do like sort of body horror flicks. I like the idea of them, you know, that's what kind of got my attention was the fact that, you know, they're, they're using practical effects on like, like a modern day movie and, and uh, playing up like as if it was like an 80s or 90s mm. flick kind of thing. Very throwback, that, very throwback. Yeah. and, that, and Very that, you're embracing the practical effects side rather than the um, CG side. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was really And cool. also, I guess that comes down to sort of budgetary limitations and that as well. Yeah. But no, I like The Void. I definitely recommend that as well. And The Autopsy of Jane Doe. Definitely recommend that as well. Give it a watch. It's a great horror flick. Mm. Really liked it. Kind of want to watch it again. Oh, nice. I'm really excited to um, have a look at it. I'll take it home with me. <laughs> you bring it back, though. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Depends how good it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you a couple of movies uh, recently. Um, yeah. History Road and Goldstone. Yes. Two great, great bloody Aussie flicks. I love, um, you know, Aussie cinema as well, especially when it's done well. Um, one of my all-time favourite Australian flicks is um, The Hunter with Willem Dafoe and, yep. and about the hunting the Tassie, Tassie Tasmanian tiger. tiger. Oh, I love that movie. And, and uh, yeah, the two that you lent me, um, Goldstone was great. Mystery Road was so well done. Yeah, I loved them. They were really good. Mm. Definitely worth a watch of those two, I would say. Mm. Mm. It's that like I said, the me of, uh, another Tassie movie. Uh, you've got Van Diemen's Land up on your wall here. I did. That's I, one that I haven't seen, and I really have been yeah. wanting to watch for a long time. Yeah, the reason I have that up on the wall because if you notice, it's signed. I actually met the director oh, afterwards because right. he was. They had like a special screening, and he came down, and we did like a Q and A afterwards. And I went down. I just grabbed like one of their leaflets and grabbed like a <laughs> silver, silver sharpie. And I sort of went down to him sort of after everyone had went. Oh, I was the last one to go down because I was like nervous or whatever. <laughs> so I went down and I was like, oh, hey, mate, really enjoyed the movie in that. I was just wondering, can I get a signature? Is that all right? <laughs> and I think he was like sort of taken aback a little bit because I don't think maybe he was sort of like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, of course. And he's like, what's your name? Like, Brent. It's <laughs> like, yeah, sort of wrote it down. So, yeah. It's like, I did my first signature today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I got that framed up on the wall. Yeah, cool. Don't get to meet uh, too many film directors often. Mm. So, yeah. But, yeah, I like that movie. Um, great sort of story and um, telling of um, Alexander Pierce and, and what happened and the whole cannibalism story. Mm. Mm. Good old Tazzy. <laughs> we got convicts and cannibals and... <laughs> <laughs> and Patrick Brown. <laughs> uh, <laughs> doesn't know where to go from there, does he? <laughs> Sorry, right, Pat. Having a bit of fun. <laughs> so yeah, definitely recommend uh, Autopsy of Jane Doe. Go out there and find it. I got mine from JB Hi-Fi. I love it. But you can get it sort of anywhere your Blu-rays are sold. Or Umbrella Entertainment, jump on their website and buy it. They actually have a lot of great sales and that. One movie they brought out, a great Aussie flick, is um, The Cool and Gatter Gold. Have you ever heard of it? No. It's like this 80s flick. It's like this father and his two sons. Like there's um, like this big uh, sort of triathlon. It's called The Cool and Gatter Gold. You know, mm. it's sort of like, you know, sprinting and rowing and swimming and then like long distance sort of endurance sort of like triathlon and that. And like the father had went in it like, you know, when he was younger, but like I can't really recall. He didn't really finish or whatever and he wanted to win. But he's one of these guys, he has like the chip on his shoulder and he's like pushing it on like his eldest son and he's like training him and stuff and he's like, you've got to win. You've got to win the bloody gold because you're the best and I know you can do it because you're the best out of me two kids. And then he's got like the younger son and he's like, I just wish my dad would pay attention to me. He's like, <laughs> I'm going to go in the cool and get a gold as well. I'm going to train myself. And his mum's like, oh, I don't really think you should do that. And he's like, I just want dad to pay attention to me and yeah like he trains and it's this bloody awesome Aussie movie and then like both sons go in the cool and get a gold and like the father's like you're useless you're hopeless you'll never win your brother's the best he's gonna win because 
<laughs> he's my number one boy and I love him more than I love you or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So real sort of family drama and that real great Aussie flick. And then you've got the actual cool and go to gold at the end. You know, you got them running up the beaches and that and swimming and, and running and sprinting and just this great uh, 80s soundtrack and that. It was really good. Like I definitely <laughs> recommend like sort of watching that. <laughs> uh, give that a watch. Good old underdog movie. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And cool and got a gold. How bloody Aussie does that sound? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I couldn't get any more Aussie. <laughs> that was so Aussie. Dinky bloody die. That is fair bloody dinkum. <laughs> <laughs> what a cracker. <laughs> so I think I've talked long enough. Who else wants? To, who wants to talk now? Who's oh, got yeah. a? T- you got a? You got a topic, Pat? Yeah, I. Uh, I might have a bit of a chat about uh, Invincible if you want. Um, the so comic for, series, yeah. So for people who aren't familiar, uh, Invincible uh, is a comic series. It's been running since um, about two thousand and two, uh, so way back. It's been going for a while. Yeah, it's one of Robert Kirkman's um, one of his big titles. Uh, Robert apart Kirkman from the of the Walking Dead fame. Yeah, Walking Dead. So he's big and most, you know, he's better known for that. Invincible. Um, I'm surprised because not many people really know about it. Um, I mean. It has a big fan base. It's it's a huge comic, but it's one of those ones that's kind of slipped under the radar for a little while. Mm. Um, but it's got like that loyal fan base. Yes, it does. Yeah, and I'm probably on top of that. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's I, not it's not <laughs> it's not put out by one of the big two. No, it's it, like Image. Or yeah, it's it. Image. I think yeah. it's I think probably it's image. image. It's probably a big for Image though. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, and published by Skybound and. I think I was more originally. I was drawn to it probably most because of the art, and and I'm. I mean, as an artist, I constantly look for inspiration and and you know just stuff to kind of you know stuff that I like. And and Ryan Otley, he's he's the main. Um, he's the artist behind Invincible. But in the beginning, I think it was the first five or six issues. It was actually um, Corey Walker. He he did it. And then he dropped out and Ryan Otley took over and he's done like most issues since, and, since. And, and it's up to about a hundred and issue 138 now. And, but and, they're um, like wrapping it up now, aren't they? It is. Yeah. And yeah. It's coming to an end now. They've announced, uh, yeah, not long ago and, um, they've announced that, yeah, it's coming to an end and I've, uh, been keeping track of it and they're doing the last 12 issues now. And, um, so they're wrapping it up, at wrapping it up completely. Yeah. There's and, a good um, number to wrap it up. at. Yeah. It's just an oh, amazing comic for people who aren't aware of what it's about. Um, Invincible is basically kind of like, I like to think of it as, um, and a lot of people say this as well, it's kind of like, you think of Superman, but with Spider-Man's kind of, mash them two together, and you've got Invincible pretty much. So, um, it starts it, inv- off with... Invincible is the main character, isn't he? Yeah, he's... Um, That's his superhero name, Invincible. Yeah, and he's, he's, uh, his real name is Mark Grayson. Basically, it's it's just follows his whole life, like since he was uh, a kid in high school, and he, there's a lot of that involved, like similar to Spider Man, as I mentioned. And, yeah, and like when he's eighteen, he gets his powers. His dad is basically like Superman, like grown, mature. He's been an actual superhero. This is what Invincible does the best: is they play up on the fact that it's a superhero comic, but in the fun way. They're like, okay. This is a superhero comic. We're going to make it cheesy and fun, but the best thing they do is they actually they it's it's adult. It's like gory, it's got blood. There's like guts, bones poking out, all that kind of stuff. So Cuz the amount of images I've seen where Invincible's just like pushing yeah. his guts back in. Yeah. <laughs> so they they do not hold back, but and that's what I love about Invincible cuz it's very um yeah, it's just it's just absolutely crazy right through, and uh, their stories are just nuts. Um, really good and v- real interesting, actually. Um, so it starts off with him in school and that, and it goes right through. Uh, his dad has been a superhero, uh, like protecting Earth, and um, basically like Superman, but he's kind of like impenetrable, and he can fly, and he's got super strength, and all that kind of stuff, and. So, when Mark grows up, he's finally got his powers, he finds out, without spoiling too much, he goes up against his dad and then tries to turn him around because something goes on, massive fights between him and, the, and there's, there's all this drama between the family and, and then there are all these ties and then it goes out of Earth as well, so it goes beyond, um, there's a lot of skipping planets, finding new aliens and alien life and... This is the thing about Invincible, it's, it doesn't end. There's just so much. You just skip 
between um, dimensions even and timelines. Oh, shit. <laughs> the thing that they do best is they've been tracking, you know, obviously things that are happening in, our li- in, in real life with the movies and the culture that we watch. They kind of take the piss out of it. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, Invincible, that's why I love them. You know, they're, they're real cheesy with their superheroes. Their, their outfits are more flamboyant and crazy and colourful, but, like, cheesy. And they got their... Sometimes they put, like, pastel colours in there and make them look real... Like, bright yellows and, and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. give them all capes and, like, the, the cheesiest looking outfits. But then it's okay because it's, like... They are the toughest, like, insane characters. Like, when they, when they fight, they brawl with, like to the bone you know like and mm. blood and guts everywhere and because i remember you telling me oh geez it was about 12 months ago you come up mm. to me you every chance you get you're like you should read invincible you, you should read it. invincible you should get on this book yeah. like, I've, I've read every issue and i'm like i've never heard of it like and i'll explain started- that bit that that i, was, I think you you said is that where i was trying to sell it to you about um battle there's, beast there's, yeah there's a character in there called battle beast and he's <laughs> basically like i like to think of him like a. Uh, He's literally, as he sounds, he's a big beast. Like, he looks like a lion, but like a big white lion, big albino lion. But he's a a humanoid version. So, he's a real tank. He's like Arnold Schwarzenegger with a lion head. And uh, (laughs) (laughs) basically. And, um, but he's like probably one of my favorite characters because his only mission and like his whole purpose in life, he just wants to find, like, he wants to go up against the best and most worthy opponent that can actually face him and win or like, you know, so there's that huge fight I was explaining to you that time where um, he's going up against um, one of the biggest, baddest villains of the whole series. His name is Thrag and he um, goes up against him and it's just this crazy battle that they go through. Like the battle drags out through probably two or three issues. Like they're just fighting nonstop. <laughs> I remember you. It'd be fun to draw. You it's showed me so some of good. the pages in that, yeah. and you have like the main story. Yeah. But you flip the page, and then it cuts back to this planet, like whatever they're on, like uh, Thrag and Battle Beast. Yeah. And it's just like this, like think of a fight out of like Dragon Ball Z, some yeah, or something Dragon- like that, and like times it by a hundred. Yeah. You know, there's blood and guts, and they're on this planet, and they're just like beating the holy hell out of each mm. other, and that's just like the secondary story for like. Yeah. It's like three, four, five, six books or something yeah. like that. And then you're like, you go back to the main story and you flip a page and they're there. And it's just like, not they're a lot of dialogue going. in that, <laughs> but they're just like punching the crap out of each other. You're like, and meanwhile, it, you know. <laughs> it's one of my favorite moments in the entire series. And like one core moment I loved in that was like, uh, not core moment. It's just a really cool, it just sticks with you. It was when like Thrag, uh, it looks like, like oh, what happened was um, a couple of like the creatures that, like they're fighting on this planet and they're just destroying the hell out of it it's just a alien world but there are some some of the wildlife on there they're these big beast things that um so thrag he he is uh like a vultramite he's kind of like you know the same kind of race as invincible and his dad so like, like superman pretty much because they have their own planet and, yeah. yeah and so um but they're not like superman they they can get you know if hit or cut hard enough they will bleed so these beasts that are on this planet um they are like kind of level weakness or these beasts are known to be the one of the only creatures that can actually cut into vultramites like so they're the only thrag. ones that can like harm them so thrag they're having this big battle and then thrag gets attacked by one of them and he gets like weakened from it like he kills the beast but then thrag's like kneeling over and he's like like guts is kind of half fallen out battle beast stands there and he's like oh well this is this is shit <laughs> he's like all right he's and, and battle beast is like okay well i need to make this even and he gets his own blade and cuts his own guts open and like oh, shit. <laughs> and he's like now we're even <laughs> and then they both go at it again and then it's like this another issue they're like still fighting <laughs> holy like, crap i know it's insane <laughs> and that's like one of the best things about the whole comic would be yeah like they don't hold back on the gore, um, but it's also like um, they they have issues like really dark stuff happens through the comics, which I don't imagine I would find in a lot of other comics. At at the start when you're talking about, it, I was almost going to ask like, what world does this take place in? Yeah, but it sounds like 
maybe it took place in like kind of current world for a while and then they went fuck it let's go <laughs> let's go <laughs> yeah like- well that's the cool thing about it so for the majority of the first like earlier in the series it's all earth and and it's um well not all earth they actually you know they they do fly out but it's mostly based on earth yeah. And, and around his school and all his friends and and the family and he protects Earth. So Mark Grayson, Invincible, he his sole job is to protect Earth, and he would do anything for it. And, and um, is it sort of like current time Earth or future or yeah, about current time. Um, yeah. I think in the earlier issues, yeah. So that would have been around early two thousand. So um, but yeah, and it goes from there. And you know, like they. Like I said, they they kind of piss take all the stuff that's happening around. So a lot of their characters kind of re- might resemble a few of the ones from maybe Marvel or DC, uh, but in a funny way or or whatever. Like like his girlfriend, um, Mark's girlfriend uh, Eve, uh, she's like a redhead. She looks a, she reminds me of Mary Jane, but she's like okay. actually uh, she's a superhero, and her name's like Adam Eve. Um, and yeah, it's just in just crazy and. But it goes through his whole life, and yeah, there's no real limits to it. And yeah, oh, I should give a good nod to uh, yeah another big battle that one of my like he is the probably my favorite villain. So Thrag, he he's the bigger villain. He's probably the strongest out of them all. But then you got Conquest, and and that around issue uh, one fifteen that happens, and there's just that fight between them. It's another one of those ones that goes through a few issues. But I love that kind of stuff. It's like. He's a real threat, and he's it's just you know. Is he there. a Voltramite as well? He is. There's not many Voltramites. So. Does he have a mustache? He does. He's that kind of grey haired <laughs> guy. He's probably as big as Arnold as well. <laughs> apparently, all the Voltramites on their planet, like all the men, they all have mustaches. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> and he's Power got like knows. he's got like one eye, and he's got a mechanical arm. He's had it ripped off before. He's oh, like, so you sold me on that now. Yeah. So the the big question here now is like you're obviously a massive fan of this mm. series. Where the fuck's the fan art? <laughs> <Come> yeah. <on. laughs> oh yeah. Like, oh look, that's the funny thing about it. I'm I like because I'm that like I love Ryan Otley's art, and I'm I am so inspired by it. I'm a, I'm a little scared to do fan art for it because I'm scared I can't beat it. Wow. It's kind of you know what I mean. It's kind yeah, of like I understand. When, mm. It's kind of like oh, I'm just gonna hold off till I can get a little bit better or you know improve, and, I know, and then I might have a go. <laughs> I know I know where that's at too. I I yeah. Um, yeah, I, I've got my few little guys that I will never... Well, I mean, like, just recently I did some fan art for Ren and Stimpy. Mm, um, mm, I, awesome. I mean, I, I started my career... Oh, well, not my career. My <laughs> started drawing, like, Ren and Stimpy as a kid, basically, and learning from that. Yeah. And then I never touched it for a long time because then it was always kind of like this special thing to me that I never thought I could reach that level. And it was only, like, a few months ago where I was like, you know what? It's time. Yeah. I'm going to do a Ren and Stimpy thing. And I and I, I put it out there and I was like, oh, man, have I done it justice? I um, and I still look at it and go, oh, you know, I, yeah. I, I, I want it to be better. But then, uh, you know, the official Ren and Stimpy page on yeah. Instagram shared it. And I was like, oh, it's good enough for me. That, that, was, <laughs> yes. that was so cool. Yeah. You yeah, actually met that. Bob Camp, didn't you? I met Bob Camp at, oh, yeah. at New York Comic Con. Yeah. Mm. How was that? Oh, dude, I was shitting myself. (laughs) Just like sweaty palms. Yeah. Yeah, Um, yeah, uh, because it's weird because you sit at the table in the artist alley yourself all weekend and you got people coming up and being a little bit nervous or whatever to approach the table. And uh, it's like, not like I even have any real like hardcore fans yet. Um, But being on that side of the table, you kind of feel a little bit protected by the table. Mm. And then to go Mm. over to one of my, like, childhood heroes and be like, (laughs) Hey, Bob. (laughs) My name's Bob. (laughs) I like Ren and Stimpy. Uh, (laughs) Can you draw me a picture? (laughs) And and give him some money. And and he's like, yeah, yeah, sure. Come back in a couple of days and I'll I'll have it for you. And I was like, okay. Okay. And I sl- <laughs> slinked back to my table and just like fucking had a heart attack for about half an hour <laughs> and realized what an idiot I made myself. But then uh, a couple of days later, I was like, okay, look, um, I'm a couple of days into the con now. I got, I got, I got my con got my legs. Sh- yeah, yeah, I got my con <laughs> legs. I got my shit together. I'm going to, I'm going to take a copy of Brown Fury over there and I'm going to like just pick up my, pick up my drawing and say, here, 
uh thanks for all thanks for making me make this basically <laughs> like, yeah. you know so yeah i hand him handed him the copy and said you know uh ren and stimpy is what got me into drawing and i just did my first comic so here mm. check it out and he like grabbed it on the spot and like stood there and flicked through it he was amazed and he? uh yeah and he was like is this are these guys turds <laughs> and then he's like turning to everyone he's like read this this is amazing and he's like passing it around and i'm just sitting there my face is fucking melting off i'm like freaking out <laughs> and then he tells me like uh you know of these comic jobs coming up and like people i should get in contact who are like you know into this uh doing this stuff and i'm just i like i couldn't retain any of the information at that point i'm just like fucking <laughs> <laughs> and so I walked back to the table and I went, fuck, I don't know what he told me, but uh, I think he liked the comics. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That was, yeah. like, that was like when I was uh, really awkward um, at New York because, uh, like I said before, I'm a big fan of Ryan Otley and, and he was there. <laughs> he, he had a table and he's set up and he's got like hundreds of fans coming up to him and... And I was the same. <laughs> I was oh, like, I, I have to go and meet him. I had to like grab you by the shoulders yeah. <laughs> for a second and just go, it's all right, Patty. <laughs> like, yeah. calm down. You can do this, bud. <laughs> and then like, I go oh. over and he's like, I don't know why. Like, I, I just went over and I was like, oh, I'm a big fan. And <laughs> the usual stuff you might say. <laughs> and then I kind of, yeah, said, you know, can, do, can you do a drawing? And, and he's said, whatever it will cost. And, and I was like, okay. And uh, but he couldn't take the card because international and all it, it wouldn't work. And then um, I'm like, okay, this is awkward. And then <laughs> I couldn't pay for whatever I was about to get, so I had to go to what did I do? I went back to our cash box. We didn't have enough change at the time. I think it was in the morning. And then it was just such a mess. It was like I had to go to the ATM. ATM wouldn't work. I think my card got blocked. That's right. Yeah. Do you remember my card right. got blocked because I went to the ATM? And then, uh, yeah, and I think one of you guys ended up... I think we spotted you. Yeah, you got me the money. Sort of chucked a bit of cash together and yeah. we're like, there you go. Go and, go and get a picture from your hero. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> and he like sauntered back I over. We went back there. I like, oh, got the money, finally. <laughs> and yeah, he did it up. Can you draw me it was a pretty awesome. predator? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mr. Art Lisa. He's a pretty cool guy. He's, he's um Yeah, he's real cash. He's, he's a good dude. And then I also met Umberto Ramos. He's like one of my biggest idols since early 2000. Like one of the reasons that I and and probably helped me form my style a lot as well. Gave me some direction. Just what you can definitely um, see it in there. Yeah, mm, yeah just, just growing up, just seeing his art, just really, just I was like, oh, I I like that, and and you know, I want to. It gave me that boost and kind of where I wanted to be. It gave me that direction. So meeting him was mind blowing and. It was the same kind of thing. I was a bit awkward. I went <laughs> over there and I remember I remember I went there and I think I bought a little book off him and, and I came back and you guy and you guys go, Did you give him the business card? Did you tell him your name or anything? And I'm like, Oh shit, I didn't <laughs> He doesn't even know who I am or anything like I yeah, and then I had to go back there again and awkwardly I gave him a piece you of You may have heard of me. I'm uh, Marvel's <laughs> own Patrick Brown. And he just stares at you blankly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mainly just wanted to like. You work for Marvel, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the machine. <laughs> Why does uh, everyone keep saying to me that, that to me yeah. this weekend? <laughs> oh, I just wanted him to kind of know that yeah, he was one of my that I existed fans. <laughs> nah, that was just, just helped me get where I wanted to be. So. Bloody fanboys, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <sighs> but yeah, he was awesome. Absolute legend. Yeah, I wish, <laughs> wish I was there. <laughs> yeah you would have loved it mate we uh yeah it was yeah yeah i mean if if any of us uh, any of us guys would have loved new york comic con more than mm. like the whole group it would have been you it's a yeah it's a damn shame you missed it but mm. Mm. so invisible um yeah there like, um, i kind of want to read that battle beast stuff again yeah like, i want to check that out overall um so it's definitely a comic that people you know if you're into that kind of stuff that I've just talked about, like it's definitely worth picking up. Um, the earlier, I would well, it's say, definitely earlier... is definitely edgier by the sound of it. So. Yeah, yeah, it's edgier. It's it's definitely and don't recommend it for children. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's um the earlier issues are very um yeah they're probably you know it takes a few to get into and like I said the first few issues the art style is different and then it changes to Otley and then uh 
the art style overall it just evolves you'll probably notice over 100 issues that it just it's the art is just amazing it's definitely one to pick up yeah they're actually doing a movie as well it was announced that they're going to do a movie yeah on uh, Invincible. Seth, Seth Rogen yeah uh, Evan Goldberg picked it up and they're going to do a yeah big movie on it now so wow hopefully it'll be good mm I can't wait I'm I'm amped for that mm. yeah that's Pat's Dark Tower. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see they, they were like rumours, or it wasn't rumours, people just put up photos of who they would want to be Mark Grayson. Who would you and, want to be Mark and Grayson? And they put up Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I was like, I looked and I was like, oh, yeah, I can kind of see him actually. <laughs> if, yeah, that'd be pretty cool, but I could probably pick a few others that would work pretty All well. Right, give us yeah. yours. Oh, I don't give know. Us a, give us a bit of fan casting. I couldn't think on the spot, to be honest. I don't, I don't know. Jeez. Uh, I actually don't think I'd like to have a big name, like, you know, a really big superstar name, because I, I find... Chain that... Tatum. <laughs> no. <laughs> Channing Patatum. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he was in the hay for late, Bob. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They kept him pretty short now, though, did yeah. you notice? <laughs> Say no, goodbye to a... Wevos. <laughs> I like the more no names that kind of start off, like, have I, to be a good I, pick, I'd, but... Yeah, I, like, I prefer that, too. Yeah, because yeah. then it's like... Yeah, yeah, there's no pre pre prescribed other characters sort of you know mm. weighing that down. Then you, well, sometimes yeah. it's fine if there's like a name that you've seen in like everything, like if it's like Tom Cruise or you know, and he's been in like every movie uh, that you, you. I love Tom Cruise movies as well, by the way. But yeah, you know, when he's when he's a cast as someone that you are a fan, like you, you know, McConaughey's Jack definitely getting that. He's like, getting to that too. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about that with uh, the Dark Tower. Going back to that, like. Mm. Mm. Because especially his voice as well, and it's, it's yeah. always the same accent and the, and everything. So yeah, I mean he is a versatile actor and he's good, but um, mm. he you know like he's in fucking everything, <laughs> and yeah, and, he and he's got a lot of iconic wild turkey. roles. And when yeah. they do that, and they and it's the same. You've seen him in a hundred movies. It's hard to kind of get glued to that character and get immersed into their personality, um, yeah, as they should be. Because he, he, all you see is like Tom Cruise or Matthew McConaughey. Mm. That's what I always find anyway, but mm. yeah. So hopefully, yeah, I like I like to have no names for. So with Invincible wrapping up now, like at issue 150, there would be no better time to go out and buy some of those trades and start reading it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I've um I've been trying to collect all the compen is it compendium? Yeah. Yeah, there's like how many issues in the book? Like got, 30 got, issues or something like that? Yeah, book? packed into the one. So I've got, I've got, the, I've got the first hell. two compendiums and I'm just waiting for the third once it all wraps up. Mm. And then I have Speaking it all. of which, I've got to get the new um, Duck Tower trade because it's just like they started doing the like comic versions of them like in 2008 and there was only going to be like three or four series announced. But mm. now they've just like ran with it, uh, sort of filled in these holes where you know these gaps where sort of the book in that end or stuff that was spoken about but never sort of expanded upon so they've brought people in and they've done it but now they've pretty much picked up from where you know they started and they've sort of just cycled back through and gone through the first book and now they're sort of making their way like right up to the end and i imagine they'll go right through to the seventh book Mm. so and they're sort of only sitting on like book maybe two or three right now in the comics and that's like the bloody 12th or 13th trade that's out. Like, I've got 10 or 12, ten or 11 out there already. Mm. Wow. Comics. Mm. Lots of them everywhere. <laughs> All sorts. Speaking of comics, the Bearded Geeks will be at Area 52 on Saturday for free comic book day. Wow. That yeah. was I don't know a smooth transition that. there. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> and I just broke it. <laughs> yeah. uh, I saw the free comic list today, and there's a few good books in that there that... Um, I'll have to get not as probably not as good as last year or whatever, but yeah, there's a few good books mm. one um there like Ninja Turtles book and there's a great uh, Star Trek book I'd like to get and uh, a few others I'd like to have books. a look at. Can't wait to check it out. Really, it's mm. good. it should be good. It should be good mm. down there. I'm really, I, I haven't bought any of my comics this week because I'm like I'm going down to the comic shop on Saturday, so I'll probably just get them from there. Hopefully they have them because <laughs> mm-hmm. I hate going to a comic shop and they never have the book you want. What do you do? so you have to just order online? I buy my comics online. Then? It's yeah. a pain in the ass. Yeah, because I I got to get those first prints. I got to get in and I got to get them. But at the moment, like with um, uh, Batman issue twenty one, they've just started uh, sort of the button four part series, and that's sort of like a hot book at the moment. So it's a little bit more expensive, and everyone you know these the sort of hotter storylines come out, and everybody jumps in to buy them. Well, I haven't sort of really found anywhere online that 
that has them available yet, but I've been keeping my eye out sort of every day. But I'm hoping Saturday when we're down there, they'll have it there. Mm. 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 Poor little Launceston needs a bloody comic book shop. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. You do. There's not much action here now. Yeah. So. It's pain buying online, it really is. Mm. 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 Anyway, invincible. <clears throat> Sorry, invincible. <laughs> invincible. I like choked on something then. <laughs> anyway, invincible. Good read. Definitely a mature book, not for children. We'll just say that again. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. What about you, Bob? You got anything you want to bring up? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. We might wrap it up then. Yeah. Cool. Mm. What are we uh, sitting at? Uh, one twenty-five. Oh, it's a pretty good episode it's all around. Good. I think. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty good for it. this episode. Was honestly, people, this episode was really winged. So none of us were really prepared <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> so if it sounds a bit dodgy, it's because we pretty much just winged the whole thing this week. Because, How bloody uh, good are we at winging shit, though? <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. Not Give bad. Us- yeah. <laughs> we normally have one. a couple more extra days to prepare, but we don't this week. But next mm. week, we will. We'll have lots of time to prepare, and we'll be back to our regularly scheduled program yeah. next week. Actually, next week, we should be doing our Alien episode, because Alien will be out, oh, and we'll oh, be going to see that. Oh, shit. Hell that's yeah. actually that's out next up real week. Fast. Hell yeah. Wow. So that'll be out next, well... At the time of this recording, and it'll be out in a week. Mm. And uh, but by the time you hear this, it'll be out in like two days. So mm, we'll watch that, and we might do the next episode on that. Hopefully, we're a bunch of happy guys sitting around the room talking yeah. about that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm counting on it. Yeah. I think we will be. Yeah, I think I we'll think, be okay. I think so. So yeah, mm. we wing this one today. Hope you like it. And if if not, leave hateful comments. We're still waiting. <laughs> 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 So, Bob, people want to find you online if they want to see some nice headshots or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Where there's, can the people find you there's online? There's a nice headshot at bobbybaxter.com in the about section if you want to see a, <laughs> see my my face in the about section. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, Bobby. What are Bax- you about, Bob? <laughs> I'm gonna go know. and look at that. Go, yeah, go on, go on. Hang on, where's my bloody phone? I'm gonna have a look. Yeah. You keep keep talking, keep talking. <laughs> um, yeah, BobbyBaxter.com's got my. You buy a copy of the first issue of Brown Fury and look at all my portfolio artwork and stuff. Uh, Instagram and Facebook, just Bobby Baxter cut cartoon. No, is it? Yes, Bobby Baxter <laughs> Bobby cartoon. <Baxter> <laughs> smooth. <laughs> it's so smooth. Um, and yeah, just generally Google search me and you'll find me on uh, most social media. Oh, places. look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Have a look at this. Oh, that hair. So oh sultry. my God. I miss that hair. That hair. <laughs> I had really long hair it in goes that down picture. past your shoulders. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> wow. Rock star. Those bedroom eyes. You de- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those puppy dog eyes. You definitely got some uh, three doors down action going. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> fuck. I'm going to find <laughs> I'm going to Photoshop that into an album cover. Oh, no. If I go crazy, when would you still call me Superman? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to do that. That's got to be done. What about you, Mr. Patrick Brown? Uh, if people want to look at your head, where can they find it? Mm, your shiny head. Come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you can find me at uh, patrickbrownart.com uh, or go on Facebook, Patrick Brown Art, and search for that. Any headshots? Or? Uh, no, not really, unless oh. you find my personal Facebook. But no, <laughs> <laughs> no I, don't, I don't usually. Isn't accept that that one good that headshot of you where you've got like the looking back over the shoulder action? Yeah. <laughs> What's that on YouTube? The art shot from your wedding room. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, Patrick draws curvy asses because he has one. It's <laughs> <laughs> where he gets all these reference. He looks in the mirror. Yeah. There's, a, there's a picture Tony. of my wedding album that just cracks me up because Patrick <laughs> Patrick was in my um I'm like standing to in the, the bridal side. party as one of my groomsmen and um yeah we were all standing up against this tree. And <laughs> I think Patty had like a, his wallet or something in his back pocket. <laughs> he did, but it was just uh, like so smooth. It's just this perfect <laughs> curve. This massive. <laughs> Channing Tatum ass <laughs> just poking out uh, and he's just in the in the perfect pose <laughs> I don't even know how that's come about because I've always been told I got no ass it's fucking beautiful <laughs> in that picture <laughs> 
I almost wanted a divorce and just marry <laughs> that ass. <laughs> Oh, Alira, Alira shit. always tells me I've got no ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, way to wrap up the show. Oh, well, there <laughs> you go. Pat- Patrick, Patrick Brown's ass. Yeah. I'm like, well, what is that? <laughs> uh, if you want to see my head online, um, everyone tells me that the Bearded Geeks logo looks a lot like me. That was totally unintentional. <laughs> <laughs> it looks just like me. Um, if you want to find the Bearded Geeks online, you can go to Facebook and you can just search for the Bearded Geeks and find our logo and you'll see us there. Or if you want to get technical, you can go facebook.com forward slash bearded geeks pod uh we're also on instagram at the bearded geeks and now we're searchable on youtube so if you search for the bearded geeks on youtube and again see our logo you can go through and listen to some of our previous episodes we only have two so it won't take you long to listen to it (laughs) (laughs) so from all of us here in the beard cave with uh, my sweet new posters on the wall, that Fight Club poster. I don't come in here and look at Brad Pitt every day. You ready for <laughs> a fucking road that. trip tomorrow too, boys? Oh, yeah, we got a road trip tomorrow. Oh, Actually, trip. funny, funny, funny story about that. About I'll just tell people real quick. Uh, I am taking the uh, portable recorder down, so we're going to do some sort of recording in the car. Raw, Ooh, he's raw, going all beat all geeks raw. Yep. April O'Neil on us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do look like Megan Fox. We'll just like re- <laughs> yeah. record, record the whole two-hour drive and we'll just like... Talk. So anyway, we decided uh, we wouldn't go down in the morning because it'd be too big of a day. we got to be there by like 8.30 a.m. in the morning. It's like a three-hour car drive nearly. So we decided we'd book some accommodation up before and we've uh, booked into a very nice <laughs> pub in town. But uh, Which we're going to be just as tired in the morning from like oh, yeah, we're drinking. Be <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> would have been the smarter option. You're not going to be drawing much. Bob's just like, oh, what do you want? <laughs> yeah. I'm over for this. Oh, I'll be like Bernard Black. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we've got a combination, and there's three of us going down, and there's two beds. Oh what? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> Uh, Don't worry. Shotgun. Get comfy. (laughs) Don't worry, Pat and I, we've already decided we're going to share the double bed. Yeah. Share that body warmth. And it'll be, it might be cold, so we might have to cuddle up. (laughs) Cuddle up, mate. Rug up, mate. It'll be cold. Don't worry. I'll keep you warm. You better bring bring that beard oil with you, mate. Oh, jeez, mate. Oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) I got some beard oil. Uh, Pat bought me some beard oil. Very generous gift. I'm going to go find another hotel. Don't worry, mate. You'll be in the single bed next to us. You'll be right. Uh, I'll be too tired to even try anything. So Too close. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got Area 52 to look forward to and uh, free yep. comic book day. So if you're in the area, definitely come down. Um, we've had a few people already say that they're uh, going to come down. Hope they see us there. We will be there. So come down. Have a chat. Don't be scared. Come mm. say hello. Yeah. Bobby will let you uh, run his fingers, run your fingers through his beard. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Yours is bigger than mine now. now. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, yeah, it should be good. So Mm. come down, say good day. I'm going to be selling a bit of my official Marvel art as well. Oh, you heard it here. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be good. So I'm selling my bootlegging. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) No, I got the approval. They're like, yeah, no, that's fine. You can, you know, stuff that's been out. So, like cover covers. As long as I've seen it in the shop, so I can. Can I get Share a free? Can I get a free one? Can I, I did. Free one? I, I did print a an A three version one? of the Doctor Strange cover. Ooh. So that that's a one off. You won't find that anywhere else. Uh, you gonna sign it? You gonna yeah. personalize it to me? Yep. Yeah, I will do that for you, mate. Uh, <laughs> no one can have it because it's mine now. <laughs> yeah, I'll be selling all my other art as well. I've got I've got heaps of my game fan art, and I won't be selling anything officially. Made by large companies. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, now I realise I don't know why we're inviting people down here at 52 because by the time this episode goes up, it's already going to be oh, yeah. done. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We hope you saw you there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Next time. God, it was great to see you all there. That was, that was amazing. <laughs> we're really we're sorry if Pat offended anyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. I'm yeah. sure we can sort something out. Yeah. You might get a look at uh, Pat's butt. You might stand mm, up. Yeah, you might you do the pose for you. Glimpse. Oh yeah, <laughs> you're lucky Bam. that this is going to go out after. The- <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, right. to yeah, yeah. Everyone in the past, we hope you enjoyed it. Yep. So, it. from all of us here in the Big Cave, thanks very much for listening. We hope you enjoyed this very winged and rough episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll see you all next week. Alien Covenant. 
Goodbye, everyone. Have a lovely week. Stay safe. Don't smoke. If you drink, drink responsibly. Stay hairy. Or not. <laughs> hey! hey! <laughs> All right, we're going now. We're actually going. We're going. We're going. We're going now. Goodbye, everyone. See you next week. Bye! Hey!